Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving deep into the heart of your gaming rig. With the incredible power pack into today's desktop processors, choosing the right CPU for your gaming setup has become more challenging than ever. Now, the burning question in every gamer's mind, how many cores do you really need for gaming? Before we jump into the core debate, let's rewind a bit and understand what a core really is. Back in the day, we had single core processors, one task at a time. Not like we use multiple chrome tabs like crazy. As its speed became focused, the CPU hits the 1 GHz mark and beyond. Then came the era of dual-core and quad-core processors, paying the way for multi-core monsters we see today. Now let's understand how a core really works. So, each core includes registers, CAS and the capacity to calculate data calculations that can handle a certain number of jobs or computations per second. To prove a CPU's power, just raise its speed. This proceeded quickly over time, resulting in CPUs reaching the 1 GHz threshold and beyond. Today's CPUs can reach a speed of up to 6 GHz on certain cores. Once the root of this speed has been explored, the next natural step to increase CPU's power was to add more cores and construct a CPU with multiple cores. This result in the launch of the first dual-core processor, the Intel Pentium dual-core. Today, the CPU offers 20 or more cores, offering immense data crunching power. But do you really need that many cores for gaming? That's a million dollar question. Over the years, we have witnessed a significant growth in graphic fidelity and demand across a variety of products. All of the top AAA titles need a strong graphic card to handle the demand of modern games. But where does this leave the CPU? Technically, the rise in the demand of CPUs hasn't altered with modern titles. Although you may need a new graphic card to max out the settings, you'll be surprised by seeing the CPU requirements for the great majority of them. Steam hardware survey gives us some intriguing insight. The majority of players own a 6 or a 4 core CPU, with the vast majority of them operating clock speed ranging from 3.6 to 4 GHz. For example, a recent Intel Core i3-13100KF falls under this category, yet is commonly regarded as a relatively low cost alternative. However, this remarkable data may not come as a surprise. In order to keep PC gamers pleased and eventually purchasing new games, game developers and publishers may introduce the titles that are performance oriented and appealing to the masses. Most games should be able to run at a fair level at least 60 FPS with a standard quad core CPU, a GPU like the GTX 1060. In summary, you don't need an outrageously powerful CPU to handle the current demand for modern games. Before we get into the conclusion, it's worth quickly discussing the AMD vs Intel debate. Both of these manufacturers have been fighting for the performance crown for a long time, and as a result, we have seen some fantastic CPUs emerge along the road. Intel presents leads the gaming industry in terms of performance and pricing. Intel's single-core boost rates are particularly outstanding, with even the lowest-end 13-generation CPUs exceeding 5 GHz. Not only that, but the number of cores and threads available with the low-cost Intel CPUs, ideal for developing a multifunctional machine capable of handling both gaming and workstation workload. There are a few small numbers though. Overclocking is limited to the K-series processors and you will need to purchase a Z690 or Z790 motherboard to do it. It won't be cheap. On the Team Red side, things have changed slightly in the recent month for AMD. After an unimpressive introduction in the shape of the Ryzen 7000, things were not looking good. The mandatory DDR5 requirement has driven many budget and mid-range users away from the market, owing to the expensive cost of a good set of RAMs and the new motherboards are also not cheap. However, it's not all doom and gloom as some may believe. AMD's Ryzen 5000 series of the CPUs remain good alternatives with performance at the top end comparable to the Intel's last 12th generation. And because many of the top end Ryzen 5000 series CPUs are now significantly cheaper, you may buy an excellent CPU for an amazing price. Now coming back to our original story, as previously noted, it appears that the number of cores necessary for gaming is far lower than the most people believe. Marketing strategy and technical language has promoted an agenda that say a large number of cores are required to get the high performance in the games. However, as we have seen, the vast majority of gamers are quite content with the quad-core or six-core processors, which are capable of handling high-end games. Number of cores required for gaming is often overhyped. It's not just about the core count. Factors like the clock speed, CAS and lifespan matters a lot. Now you might be wondering if having more than 8 cores doesn't boost the gaming, then why the CPUs like the Ryzen 9 7950X and the i9-3900K are such speed demons. See, they are not just charging you for more cores, they are also throwing in faster clock speeds and a bigger memory space called CAS. In simple terms, it's like having a race car. It's not just about having more seats, 
It's about having a powerful engine and a big boot space for your luggage. And guess what? Boosting the speed of these cores and giving them more room to work has bigger impact than just pumping out more features. That's a real magic trick in the world of gaming CPUs. Some of the top tier performers from AMD use something cool called 3 db cache. Now what this does is it adds more cache to the CPU. Here is the twist, with 3 db cache, AMD actually slightly lowers the clock speed. It's like asking a sap to chop a bit slower, but, and it's a big but, because it adds a ton of extra prep area, I mean the gas, it totally makes up for the slower chopping speed, I mean the clock speed, and actually boosts performance in some games. So when it comes to the CPUs, don't fall for the marketing hype. Newer 4 cores and 6 core processors are more than capable of handling today's demanding games. Focus on the CPU as I said that don't bottleneck your graphic card and can keep up with the ever-evolving gaming landscape. Whether you are Team Red or Team Blue, whether you crave for the raw power of Intel or the budget-friendly brilliance of the AMD, remember it's not just about the codes. Clock speed, CAS and lifespan matters a lot. Now, which CPU would you choose in your next build? Let us know. If you found this video helpful and want a more deep dive into the world of gaming CPUs, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Till then, stay awesome, keep spreading positive vibes, peace out.